Beaver Scouts Canada, this is Robbie's Exploring Badge. This is the Personal Achievement Badge form that needs to be filled out with three adventures. I want to do this badge because I love to explore new places and learn new things. I went to England with my mom and dad, so it was a perfect opportunity to explore exciting new places like museums, palaces, and the Queen's Household Cavalry. For my first adventure, I went to the Natural History Museum in London. We saw the giant blue whale in the main hall in front of Darwin's statue and lots of dinosaurs. We saw Triceratops, Brachiosaurus, Euplocephalus, Parasaurolophus, Pachycephalosaurus, and a fully animatronic T-Rex. All right, Robbie, so this is the uh, Natural History Museum in London. Isn't that a beautiful building? Yeah, look at that stained glass. Yeah, it's built just like a church. Uh-huh. Yeah, here's yep. the interior. And uh, zooming in from the whale there. Yeah. Who's that, Robbie, at the end of the hall? Uh, it's Darwin. That's right. Yeah, he's there, he's there because, uh, you know, this has a lot to do with biology. Yep. There's the blue whale. Do you like the blue whale there? Do you remember what the other thing was that they had there before? Oh, uh, Brachiosaurus? Yeah, it was uh, an what apatosaurus. Was oh, oh, it was an apatosaurus. Okay. Yeah. See, there's no other museum that has, like, this level of detail. and yes. It's ink, just a beautiful. Like, all the, look at that roof. Of, like, but look at all the little birds and everywhere, yeah, you know? Like everything things. has to do with biology and yeah. evolution and everything, you know? Yeah, it's like a church to science. Yeah, and uh... I remember you really liked this uh, swordfish. Oh yeah, but like, it's a weird way how you see it, but it's that swordfish. Yeah, it's because it's preserved. Keep squishing it. Oh, it's working. Oh, the things are moving, but I see it. Go, squish, squish. Keep going, keep going, bud. Oh, that thing's gonna come out. Yes, bud, yes. Oh! It's coming, it's almost out, I see it. Yeah! Did I get it? Did it, bud, show it, show it. That's what oh, the penny looks like. I got like. a T-Rex. Let me see it. I got a T-Rex. Oh, oh, I got a T-Rex. Fantastic. Wow. wow. I got a T-Rex. Oh, look, Robbie, on this side it says one pound. One see? pound. Or, no, no one penny. One no, penny. So this is the beginning of the dinosaur exhibit, Robbie. Oh yeah. Do you remember these things? Yeah. What are they? T-Rex skull and a Triceratops skull. I'm not oh. sure that was a T-Rex, but yeah, Triceratops. Yeah. And this animatronic T-Rex was amazing, yeah. eh? Yeah. Look at that. The lighting's not bad. Uh, that T-Rex. Oh my gosh, how did they boot the features in there? Pendodontosaurus. Oh, is he? Yeah, he is, isn't he? No? Oh, he's a mammal. Oh, he's a mammal. Oh, Robbie, come on. How hard is that? That's Tarby. You used to call him Tarby, but... Yeah, I know. He's so easy. Yeah, he's easy. That's easy. This thing's easy. That's, yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think this is a new one. He's a mammal, yeah. yeah. A mammal is a mammal. Yeah. Oh, one more, one more, and one more, bud. It's the Plotticus. Right. Yes. yes. Oh. Those are easy. Yes. That's five, bud. Nice. I wish I could tell you what uh, what dinosaurs those are yeah. coming in the eggs. That's a that's the head of a pa a skull of a Pachycephalus horse. Yeah, that's what you usually only find. Yeah, and that's a, the club of a Euplocephalus. Yeah, that's yes. right. And that's a skull of the Parasaurolophus, and that's a pressure. And yeah. uh, this is the legs of a mammal. Yeah. Wow, look at these. These are Velociraptors, but yeah. with feathers now. Yeah, and look at that guy with the blood in the mouth. Yeah. It's like one of them ate, and then the other one is hungry. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, and that's a like, good... Yeah, what is that? Uh, Triceratops? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, almost, they got the full skeleton. I know. Look at those horns. Yeah. 
And this moon here is it's like so detailed. you you never see anything this big and detailed like that. It's like a big, huge balloon, but it looks we should have like looked for where the landing was for Apollo Eleven. You know, I I didn't see that they labeled anything. Yeah. It would have been nice to see where because there's still stuff that we left on the moon. Okay, so this is the the hall of birds. birds. Look at all those birds. birds. They're all very very similar, yeah. but oh different. Oh my gosh! Look at that blue one right there. Oh yeah. my gosh! Okay. And this here. It's Lucy. The yeah. Skeleton of Lucy. This was discovered by Donald Johansson in the 70s, yeah. and it was like one of the most valuable finds. This was the first uh, hominid that walked upright. And you could tell that from the uh, from the bones that they found. There's other uh, hominids that they found that were related to Australopithecus afarensis, and uh, so we have the complete skeleton now. We didn't in the 70s, so there's Australopithecus. Th those are all Australopithecines, very important. Mm -hmm. For my second adventure, I visited Blenheim Palace in Oxfordshire. It was built for John Churchill, the first Duke of Marlborough, who was a descendant of Winston Churchill. I liked the dining room the best because the walls were nicely painted. Maria, where are we? Blenheim Palace. Wow. Wow. So stunning. Okay, Robbie, where are we? Uh, Blenheim Palace. That's right. This is the entrance to uh, the palace. Yeah. Usually you want uh, to impress visitors that are coming, so yeah. it's usually big and, and has lots of light. Columns. Yeah, and a big, giant door. And Double there's... Door. Do you remember who that is on that column back there? Uh, John Churchill. That's right. He was created the first Duke of Marlborough. Do you remember the queen that created um, Marlborough queen the first? Anne. That's right. That's right. This is uh, the dining room. Yeah. It's all painted. Beautiful. Really nice. And all the rooms are connected uh, by doors like this. There's no hallway. And all of these uh, tapestries uh, tell the story of John Churchill's battles in France. These are all the battle standards that were collected. There's... Uh, these are all the the, the, the battle standards that were taken from the French after Audouinard, Marplaquette, Rami, and Blenheim. And this one here is the Rami standards. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, you see uh, Fleur de Lis once in a while. All those tapestries were done as a set, and they all tell this, the story of his his time when, uh, during war. That's why he was given the palace, because he was an incredible general. Yeah. Yeah. Look at all that beautiful light. Do you remember what room this is? Library. Yeah, that's right. All the books there. And those pipes are so big. Yeah. yeah you got a nice pipe organ. And behind us is a it's, statue of who? Queen Anne. That's right. Yeah. Queen Anne and Sarah Ch Sarah Churchill had the statue made. She was uh, good friends with... Uh, Queen Anne in the beginning. I mean, they had uh, a fight later on, but but during the time, I mean, John Churchill really did a service to the country. That's why this was given to him as a gift. Same thing when Winston Churchill, he was given Chartwell, right? Yeah. Yeah, you know, no, Winston no. Churchill, he was related to the 8th Duke of Marlborough. Do you remember his name? Uh, no. It was, uh, his name was George. Oh, yeah. George Churchill. And the present uh, Duke of Marlborough is, what's his name? Gordon? James. No, James. Yeah, James Spencer Churchill. 
He's a t presently the 12th Duke of Marlborough. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. There's the entrance to the right. Ooh. And this uniform, I think, was worn by uh, Winston Churchill. This is a Hussar uniform that he would have worn when he was younger. And uh, what is this room here? It's a chapel. For my third adventure, I visited the Household Cavalry Museum in London. I tried on a lifeguard uniform, but it didn't fit too well because I'm too little. My dad explained lots of the history of the items on display. So Robbie, this is uh, you in front of uh, horse. horse Guards Parade. Yeah. So that's a, do you remember what kind of uh, guard that is? Uh, lifeguard. Yeah, because he's got the red. Yeah. I love this picture of us, you know. There he is standing at attention. Do you know what this is called, this area? Uh, it's where the horses... Uh... Yeah, it's uh, it's the parade grounds oh, yeah. behind the Horse Guards Parade. And this is what it used to, uh, what it looks like when the Queen celebrates her birthday. You see all the, uh, the guards all lined yeah. up? Those are one of each of the five regiments of foot. Okay. okay you got the Grenadiers, the Coldstream, the Scots, and, the uh... Welsh, and the Irish. So those are the five. Do you remember the two... Uh, regiments of cavalry. Um, the um, blue, the um, something, the blues. The blues and royals. Yeah, the blues and royals and the lifeguards. That's right. And uh, if you look really closely in the foreground here in the front, yep. these are the the that's the uh, artillery, the royal artillery, uh -huh. and they're going in front of the queen. And then uh -huh. for her birthday, they do a big parade like this every year. Okay. Robbie, who's that little soldier? <laughs> Wow, that's gorgeous. Do you know what you're dressed up as? Uh, I don't know. You're, not the blues, uh, not the blues. So you're a lifeguard, Rob. Oh, yeah. With the, with the um, white plume and the red coat. It's gorgeous, bud. And where are we? We're in the stables for the horses, eh? Yeah, we're in the stables. And there's a breastplate. Now let's put a breastplate on you. Maria, look at this. Look at that, Robbie. You're complete with the breastplate, huh? That looks so good. So these are the two reg uh, horse regiments on the horse. Yes, and what uh, what are the regiments? Blue, the blues and royals, and the lifeguards. And which one's which? So the one with the white plume is the uh, lifeguards, yeah. and the one with the red is the uh, the blues and ro royals. Yeah. Now here's a trick question. What about the one on the left with the black plume? Who's he? So that guy, okay, is, um, he's a farrier mm -hmm. for the lifeguards. And what, the reason why he has a black tunic is because they do really dirty work. And so they have a black tunic. And of course, the farrier for the, for the Blues and Royals, he has the same tunic as, as the regular would have, you know? This is the Earl of Zetland Trophy. Yes, so he was a Marquis before, and then yeah. he became an Earl later on. Yeah. So do you remember what the story about this was? Oh. Uh, so he was in the, in, the, in, the, in the Horse Guards. He was yeah. in the Blues and Royals. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's traditional for the officers to buy a piece of silver and donate it to the officers' mess before they leave. And he neglected to do that, and uh, a couple of years went by, and, and finally he said, oh, just get a little something and, and put it on my bill like he didn't care about it so the guys from his regiment they uh, got together and they put this together and it cost uh, over a million pounds uh, in today's money to, to put this together isn't that incredible yeah there's a lesson there so this is an imperial eagle from the 105th regiment at waterloo robbie and uh, this was a charge that was at uh, Waterloo, but this is the uh, the Scots Grays. The Scots Grays were part of the Union Brigade, okay? And in the Union Brigade, you had one cavalry f uh, regiment from each of the uh, three territorial areas. You had the, the ones from Scotland were the Royal Scots Grays. The ones from England were the uh, Royal uh, the Royal Household Cavalry. And then from Ireland, it was the Inniskillens. But... Um, so the Blues and Royals were the ones who took the, um, at, the, at the time, the descendants of the Blues and Royals were the ones who took the 105th. 
But I wanted to show you what the Union Brigade looked like and what the cavalry charge looked like at uh, out Waterloo, and this is uh, one of them. So there's not a lot of paintings of, about the 105th uh, Eagle being taken, but this is a very famous one of Sergeant Ewart at the Battle of Waterloo, again from the Scots Greys, taking the, uh, I think it's uh, the 45th Regiment uh, from the uh, French infantry, uh, Les Invisibles, who had never lost their colors before. and uh, But the cavalry charge was so uh, incredibly uh, strong and, and, and overwhelming that they managed to take an eagle. And this is a trophy. That's why it's such an important thing to have a trophy like that. You get it? Yeah. So this here is... Um, uh, something that uh, one of the soldiers had in his pocket. He was uh, from the Blues and Royals, but he was doing a bayonet charge. Yeah. And he got shot. And what did it go through? It went through a cigarette case, a pocketbook, and a French dictionary. Yeah, and a the few page of it. Yeah, and the French dictionary actually stopped, uh, stopped the bullet, and otherwise he would have been he would have been killed. Whose leg is this, Robbie? Lord Uxbridge. That's right. Do you want to see the moment that it blew off? Yeah. So, Robbie, this is the Battle of Waterloo, and here's the shell. Now, listen to what Oxbridge says. My God, I've lost my name. My God, so you have. Apparently all that actually happened and all that actually was said like that at the battle. So these are uh, the medals of a corporal major. Yeah. Do you remember his name? Mick Flynn. Yeah, so he's the, the, the soldier in the UK that has the mo more medals than anyone else. That's a lot of medals he's got there, eh, Robbie? Yeah, 12. Yeah. So, Robbie, do you know what this is? Barrier Axe. Yeah, it's a it's a, a farrier's axe. Yeah. And do you know what you do with it? Kill horses if they're with, sick. Yeah, with this. Well, if they're let's say they got shot and they're yeah. Yeah, they put down with a spike, and then the the with the axe part they cut off the hooves. Now you, we didn't see them when we were in London, but uh, once in a while they come out, and there they are. There, the the those two guys were with the axes. They're both farriers. You'll notice that uh, the blue and royal is on the right. Now the one on the left has a black plume, like we saw earlier. Yeah. But he, he has a, a black tunic because uh, doing that kind of job is very messy. It's the same thing like the the uh, artillery. Our, the artillery ranks wear black because they have to take care of the cannon and there's always gunpowder in the old days, right? Yeah. And so they would wear black tunics. Adventure One. I was disappointed that they exchanged the sauropod for the blue whale in the main hall. Adventure 2. I like the palace but would have liked to hear the pipe organ. Adventure 3. I was impressed most with Corporal Major Mick Flynn's medals.